So it turns out there's actually an alternative algorithm for solving the lower triangular system. So how does that go? Well, remember L is a unit lower triangular matrix. So what if instead we partition that matrix into L0, 0, 0, 0 L1, 0 transpose lambda 1, 1, except we know that this entry here is a 1. And now we partition Z into Z0, zeta 1, and then that is equal to, uh, let's see, y0 psi 1. And again, what do we do? Well, we multiply out the left, we set it equal to the right-hand side, and we see what kind of falls out. So, if we multiply this out, what do we get? We get L0, 0 times Z0, L0, 0 times Z0. And below it, we get L10 transpose Z0. Plus zeta 1. And the top part has to be equal to Y0. And the bottom part has to be equal to Psi1. And how do we now reason through it? Well, what if we're sliding through our matrix and our vectors? And we've gotten to this point right here where we have already overwritten our vector y with z0. Okay. In the next step, we would like to compute the next entry of z so that we have one more entry of z already computed. That entry is zeta 1. So what we're really saying is when we get to this point, we already know L10 transpose, we know z0 and we know psi 1, and we notice that z1 then is just equal to, or sorry, zeta 1 is just equal to psi 1 minus the dot product of L10 transpose times z0. Okay? And that then, of course, overwrites our vector psi 1. So that, looks, that turns into the algorithm that we see on the right now. And what we notice is that every, at every step, we expose a part that we're already done with, a part that we want to compute with and solve for zeta 1, overwriting psi 1. And from that, then, we come up with that in the current step, we need to just compute the next entry, and then we move on.